This is Victor Martinez. And why have you not stopped by the MD Superstore? Come on now. I'm there all the time. You should be there too. Hey, what's up, guys? This is David Bay reporting for MuscularDevelopment.com. I'm down here in Illinois on the eve of the big contest for the 2013 Wings of Strength the Chicago Pro. Uh, standing with me here, I have IFBB Pro Craig Richardson. Uh, Craig, first off, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this interview a little bit late at night. It's nine o'clock, so Craig's kind of just getting winding down, going to get some rest in for tomorrow. Uh, Craig. Initially, um, we had you listed as doing the 212. Now, we spoke a little earlier. You said you weighed in a few pounds over, had decided that you were going to stick with the Open as opposed to trying to drop a few pounds and make it into the 212. Can you talk to us a little bit about your decision for that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, my normal contest weight is normally around uh, anywhere between 214 and 216 anyway. And when I get down there, I'm usually draining everything out of me to get down to around 214. Uh, right now, I'm about 215 or so. And to drop another three pounds uh, may take a little bit more out of me than I would like. So I'd rather just play it safe. Uh, right now, I'm actually, uh, you know, George Ferris, which is my nutritionist, uh, I'm going to eat up a little bit to see if I can fill out a little more because the more we tried to make weight, the more I noticed that we started to flatten out a little bit and, uh, you know, get a little stringy. And I'm, a little, I'm 5'7", so I'm a little taller than most of the other competitors in that class. So I don't want to be, you know, the guy that's the tallest and at the same time be flat. So I'd rather go in full, hard. Um, I've had great success in the open before around this same weight, so I don't think uh, tomorrow will be any different. Yeah, that's kind of what I was just going to touch base on, is that we know the Craig Richardson that we've seen in the past. You've given up a little bit of size uh, to some of the other competitors, but have still been able to place very well, you know, due to the combination of, you know, full muscle bellies, aesthetics, and fantastic conditioning. So I think, uh, you know, I think I can say, and I think everybody at MuscularDevelopment.com would agree that uh, your presence in the Open uh, is definitely going to make some waves, and, you know, we can look for you uh, being a front runner as you would be in any other show. Now, from 2006 to 2009, Craig, we saw you do a lot of shows. I think I, I looked up the past uh, contest history. It was around a, a dozen over those three years. Now, in the past few years, there's only been a handful of shows. I think, I think maybe three or four in the past few years. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, what, maybe what was going on that you weren't competing as much? You know, was it one of those things where, you know, you're trying to make improvements or just other stuff going on that, that, uh, that you know, doing that number of shows didn't, uh, didn't fit in your plan? Uh, yeah, well, um, I try to explain to a lot of people sometimes that you have to have a life outside of bodybuilding. Absolutely. Obviously, I've been competing since 1991, so, you know, I'm getting a little towards the end of my, end of my career. Um, but I have a wife, Jennifer, that's back home uh, with my three kids, uh, a granddaughter that's four years old, uh, so I'm busy with that. I have a full-time job. Uh, I'm a full-time student. Um, I'm actually earning a, an associate's degree now uh, in general business. Um, I do some work with uh, mentally challenged uh, kids at the Alhambra. Um, I do that with them. I do some stuff with the kids at Straight and Narrow to try to help them you know, stay on the right path. So I'm really busy doing a lot of things. Um, and, and again, I, I try to stress to everyone, you really can't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, like I said, I have a full-time job. I'm a full-time student because one day this is going to be over. One day, you know, I'm going to be, you know, not that I'm not normal now, but I'm going to be really a normal guy just coming as a fan, watching all the other competitors get ready and suffer uh, to get ready for these shows. So I just want to make sure that my future is more secure by, you know, having... Uh, my degree and uh, my job and everything set in place. And also, obviously, I try to spend as much time with my family because, you know, for the last uh, 20 years or so, uh, my oldest daughter is 22 years old. I have a son that's 20 and another daughter that's uh, 14. She'll be 14 uh, in August. Um, but they've kind of suffered uh, while I've been getting ready for contests and not being able to be around as much and not be able to go on vacations as much and things like that. And being that I'm almost 40 now, um, you know, I try to enjoy some of those things with them because I turned around 
the little one was a baby and now she's 22 with a baby of her own. Uh, my son, same thing, he's in school and he's 20 years old. Uh, so now I still have the 14 year old, but I still try to spend time with even the older ones. Um, so I just don't want to miss out on some of those important moments, you know, especially with my granddaughter. Um, so that's why I kind of, you know, laid back a little bit and because I, I feel like I had more important things that I had to take care of. Absolutely. And it couldn't, uh, couldn't be a more commendable reason to, to kind of back off. You know, uh, the guys on MD know I'm a little bit of a movie buff and your whole story kind of reminds me. One of my favorite movies, Radio, uh, Ed Harris was giving a speech to the community about the whole situation that was going on. And he said, and one of his coaches told him, son, you got to have your priorities. You find out what's important. You push everything aside. And, you know, again, can't say, can't say enough about making your family and your work a priority in your life and, you know, kind of having bodybuilding there, too. Um, that being said, you know, you are back on the scene now. Looking very forward to uh, seeing you on stage tomorrow. Um, do you have any plans? I know there's only a few more shows left before the Olympia. We have a show coming up in Tampa, uh, then one in Dallas, and there's one over in Finland. Uh, have you looked forward? to any of the other shows yet or are you kind of just focusing on on tomorrow I actually focus on one show at a time I try not to look too far ahead um, you'll definitely see me again before uh, the season's over with um, you know if I can I, I don't know how some of these guys do it when they get so heavy in the offseason they're able to make make it down they were making it down to 202 actually um, I'm having a hard time getting down to 212 and, and maintaining fullness. But if I can actually do that, I'd like to, you know, uh, give the 212 Olympia a shot one day just to see, you know, what happens. So, you know, it's not written in stone, but we'll see what happens. So there is a possibility that later on in this year, we could see you still make a move towards the 212 division. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to wrap this up, Craig. I'm going to let you get back to your room and wind down here for the night. Uh, once again, thank you very much for taking your time for this interview for everybody at Muscular Development. Uh, once again, this is David Bay reporting for MuscularDevelopment.com from Chicago, Illinois with Craig Richardson. Uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Craig.